Nintendo is obsessed with making remakes. But is this a good thing or a bad thing? Let's figure it out in today's discussion. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Mood News. How is everyone doing? Welcome back. Hopefully we're going to be a bit more consistent now after that, that two week hiatus. We had, we had one yesterday. If you haven't seen that already, be sure to check it out. But today, today's topic is about something which I hold near and dear to my heart. And I was thinking of all of yesterday thinking, who? why does Nintendo keep making remakes? I mean, I figured it out, right? It's because they're obviously working on the next console, they're working on the Switch 2, or the Switch successor, we should say that. Not the Switch 2, we don't know if it's the Switch 2. Probably won't be called the Switch 2. I, I bet money they won't be called the Switch 2. Actually, I'm not going to bet money because that sounds dangerous in case it is called the Switch 2. But if I'm being honest, it's probably not going to be called the Switch 2. It's probably going to be called something entirely different, or like the Switch OI, or you know, some crazy weird name. Regardless, they're focusing on that. They're focusing on making big, bombastic, boom, bam, boom games for it. You know, like the next 3D Mario, I'm sure, the next Zelda, all of that stuff. And so with all the resources packed towards that, obviously, how are they supposed to support the current system? How are they supposed to do that? Now, initially, in the early years of the Switch, the main way which they did that was porting Wii U games to the console because so many people didn't buy a Wii U, might as well port them to the Switch so then new people can play them. So people who didn't own a Wii U, unlike me, I did own a Wii U. Comment if you like, if you owned a Wii U, yo Wii U owners rise up, could actually play the games for the first time. And that all, all that was all fine and dandy, right? And honestly, there's still some Wii U games which they haven't brought to the console yet. Xenoblade Chronicles X, I think, that's one. Any others? Game and Wario, maybe? But I don't know if that's even possible. Nintendo Land? Gosh, that would take a bit of time to make Nintendo Land work. Regardless, that's what's going on with those. And I think Nintendo might have burnt out their audience on this, or maybe they caught up in that regard, where there's not really that much left of that Wii U library. And and by that time, right, that was like 2018, 2019 sort of stuff. You know, we get like Smash Bros Ultimate, but we also get a bunch of other games on the side, which are, you know, like ports of Wii U games. And even Smash Bros Ultimate, some people were like, oh, this is kind of too close to the, to Smash 4. I wonder if people still think that. Do you still think that? Do you think Smash Ultimate was too close to Smash 4? But regardless, you know, that's in the past. And, and that was a really good buffer, if we're being honest, in order to make more games come out to the console in the meantime. But now, on the, the latter half of the, the Switch's life cycle. It's kind of funny, it's like, we started initially with Wii U ports, and then we had, you know, and now as we're, we're folding in, as, as we're, we're easing out of the console's lifespan, we're starting to get just a buttload of different kinds of ports. Ports from the GameCube, mainly, actually. And it's interesting. And even the 3DS. Those two consoles are the ones we're focusing on the most. And we already talked about this yesterday in the last video, where I was saying, like, oh, they should add Kit Icarus, you know, and they should also add a bunch of, you know, Metro Prime 2 and a bunch of other GameCube titles, because those are probably the, the least likely consoles which people, or at least likely titles of consoles which people can give their hands on after the Wii U, if we're being totally honest in terms of sales, right? Because the GameCube sold the least next to the Wii U, I'm pretty sure. 3DS is a different story altogether. I think porting 3DS is, well, we'll get onto that a little bit. But that's actually a pretty interesting thing. I didn't think about that. They pulled over Wii U games and Wii U was the least sold. And they were pulling the GameCube games and the GameCube games were the least sold. So are we going to go like by that logic? Because if they ported, for instance, Wii games to the Switch, maybe people are less likely in terms of like the, the general casual consumer is less likely to get that game because they most likely owned it previously because that console sold so well. Is that That's actually a pretty good theory, guys. We just figured that out. Bloody hell. Geniuses over here. Does that even make sense? I don't even know what I said just made sense. Maybe I forgot it already. Am I a goldfish? No, I know what I said. So I think actually that's a decent reason why we're not getting Wii games ported to the Switch um, because I think like most of them probably already had decent sales on them. Of course, we've got like Mario Galaxy, but that was part of like the Mario 3D All-Stars collection. Was there any other Wii games which have been ported? I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'll visit World of Goo, I guess, but that's just like a, an, like an eShop WiiWare title. I think that's definitely an aspect which I'd like to see, obviously, because I'm a huge Wii boy. Wii boy? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, I'll call myself a Wii boy. Wii boy size up. But, like, that makes sense if we, if we think about it in that perspective. So GameCube being the focus and getting those, those titles over to the Switch via remakes 
makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Because not that many people have played it. They can even, they're not even adding HD to the end of these, if you guys have noticed. Like Luigi Mansion 2 is called Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, but Thousand Year Door is just called Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door because they're trying to market to people as a brand new game. And that's not malicious. That's not like out of a place of like, hoo, 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 we can trick people. It's because they're trying to give these titles genuinely a second life on the Switch. Uh, which is which is quite an interesting contrast to, to the you know saying hd or deluxe or, or stuff which they've been doing previously you know mario rpg and a thousand year door are both examples of games which they're ported um, and they don't label them as ports they are purely new titles in nintendo's perspective and so it's interesting because as we're winding down right like it makes sense it makes logical sense why they're focusing on new titles for the next console to get that console ready and giving us ports because it's more so easier. It's also a way of getting sales out of games which have already been created. It's less energy to make them overall. Boom, smart business choice, right? But are people catching on? Now, this is the thing where it's like, okay, is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? And I think honestly, from the choices of the games they are remaking, for the most part at least, I would say no problems whatsoever because Thousand Year Door again, very critically acclaimed video game, many people's favorites, then bringing it back is like huge for the fans. Uh, it gets people really, really excited and gives new people a chance to play this game for the first time, such as myself. And that's fantastic, you know, like the same thing happened with Metroid Prime Remastered and hopefully the same with, with Metroid Prime 2 Remaster and Me well, Metroid Prime 3 was on the Wii, but regardless, you know, that sort of thing. Maybe we can get Star Fox Adventures or, you know, some other like fun little games from the, the GameCube era. Honestly, I would love a Sunshine remake from the ground up versus the, the port we got, but that's maybe that's wishful thinking. Um, surprised even if Twilight Princess or Wind Waker came to Switch, not even being called Wind, like Wind Waker HD, just being called Wind Waker or just being called Twilight Princess. I even think it would be cool. Oh my God, just had this idea. What if we got a remake of Four Swords Adventure, but it was like in the Link's Awakening art style? Well, not even the Link's, like a mix of a Link's Awakening and Toon Link art style. That would be so cool. Oh my God. I really want Toon Link. I'm going to say that right now, guys. The same way we're missing Paper Mario, we need Toon Link back. Like, we haven't had Toon Link in so long. I miss him. I miss Toon Link. We had him in, in Triforce Heroes, but that was that was a while ago. Come on. Give us a new Toon Link. Or a, to a new Toon Link game. Don't give us a new Toon Link. I want Toon Link again. But then, on the other side... <laughs> that took me a while. Sorry for all the rambling. But then, on the other side, we have titles like Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. And, well, some people loved Luigi's 2, right? I've never played Luigi's Mansion 2. But you have to agree that Luigi's Mansion 2 feels totally different compared to Thousand Year Door in terms of what it represents, you know? The 3DS isn't that old. It was still active during the first few years of Nintendo Switch. It was basically the last console before it, if we're discounting the Wii U. It's like we had the 3DS and the Switch. Those were the two consoles for a while. And so it's quite interesting for them to reference the 3DS for porting over because the 3DS overall was very, very successful. You know, what was it, 80 million, 90 million? Something like that. They, it, the 3DS sold a bunch. Now, bear in mind, some people buy multiple 3DSs, such as myself, and, you know, I'm sure many of you bought more than one 3DS in your lifetime. But many people might think, well, I had this game already, and there's not really much point of me getting this. Or they might see the graphical contrast between the 3DS version and the Wii U, and the Nintendo Switch version, and think, okay, well, this isn't that big of a jump. Or they might just lead to more contrast between those, and making more comparisons between it, which might not be that great, especially when you look at the GameCube games and their contrast, which is already huge, but also paired with the marketing of like, ooh, this is a brand new experience versus, for instance, Luigi's Mansion 2 is just called Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which then I think that also maybe it's not the smartest, especially after looking at these other titles. But I think if people call it Luigi's Mansion 2 and not add HD to the end, some people might get peeved. You know, it, it's an interesting position for Nintendo to be in, in terms of like the ports versus the like up, like, you know, the remasters from, from the uh, ground up. And it's like, I don't know, it, it is interesting. It's an interesting conversation to have. And I really think in terms of the 3DS titles, it's not a bad thing, you know? It really just, if anything, was a bit frustrating knowing that a lot of these 3DS games, which people were begging for to be on the Switch whilst they were still coming out on the 3DS, such as 
you know, Bowser's Inside Story, Luigi's Mansion 1 remake on the 3DS and all of that stuff still aren't on Switch and also aren't the ones getting remade or ported onto it. Because if we got Inside Story, for example, did I say, wait, did I say Thousand Mario and Luigi Thousand Year Early? I meant, I meant Inside Story. Maybe I, wait, I can't remember. Did I, am I confusing everyone? Regardless, I meant Inside Story in case I did. Maybe I, I'm just forgetting. I have the memory of a goldfish, guys, for being completely honest. But if Inside Story, for example, got ported to the Switch, how excited and like, you know, thrilled would people be? Or even if Luigi's Mansion 1 3DS got ported to Nintendo Switch, people would be so, so hyped. So it's a bit strange that they're porting certain games of 3DS versus, you know, the choices with GameCube making a lot more sense. But you know what? I don't think it's that bad, you know, like overall, it's very, very beneficial with us getting these ports because it just, it's just so nice. You know, we get the best of both worlds. We can cruise, play these games maybe we didn't play before or return to whilst we're waiting for this new console. And before we even know it, guys, we're going to have this next console in our hands and <laughs> this whole conversation of oh is there too many ports coming out right now it's probably going to be pointless so nintendo is in such a good position and i'm so so excited to see what's to come with this next nintendo direct but what do you guys think make sure you tell me in the comments below and until next time i hope you have a wonderful evening or morning or midday or whatever okay bye guys